General Navarre tried yet another new strategy. French units were set up in remote areas supplied by air. Their mission was to search out and destroy the Viet Minh. The French planned to test their new strategy in a valley set among the western mountains, 170 miles from Hanoi, Dien Bien Phu. The Viet Minh had passed through the valley during a major attack on Laos. The French expected another attack and thought Dien Bien Phu would be the place to engage them. In November 1953, 12,000 French troops began dropping into the valley under the command of Colonel Christian de Castro. The top French command in Saigon was sure that Jacques would never be able to mass enough troops around Dien Bien Phu, never get heavy artillery up the hills, never keep supply lines open. The command at Dien Bien Phu was equally confident. The artillery officer insisted that no Viet Minh gun would be able to fire more than three rounds. I saw all sorts of civilian and military authorities go through Dien Bien Phu. Unless my memory is completely twisted, I don't remember a single one. Absolutely not a single one of these authorities who didn't find that Dien Bien Phu was a formidable base. It was the great land and air base. It was untakeable. The Viet Minh saw Dien Bien Phu as a great opportunity, but a great gamble too. Ho Chi Minh's forces had lost heavily in attacks on other French strongpoints, but they decided to take the risk. From Thái Nguyen, it took us about 45 days. We marched at night and rested during the day. Sometimes, we just slept on the roadsides if there were no shelters around. The French command was inviting a battle because they thought the Viet Minh would never be able to get enough troops and guns to Dien Bien Phu but they did. 51,000 Viet Minh soldiers, four times the number of French troops, crossed the mountains carrying supplies on their backs and bicycles and hauling guns. Both sides had a special reason for wanting to win at Dien Bien Phu. At this same time, January 1954, the great powers were meeting in Berlin. They set a date and place, April 26th in Geneva, to meet and discuss Asian issues, including the Indochina crisis. On March 13th, Jab launched his attack on Dien Bien Phu. The battle began with massive human wave assaults. Viet Minh guns blanketed French artillery from positions so well dug in and camouflaged that the French planes could not get at them. The first post fell within eight hours. By the next day, March 14th, the Viet Minh shelling had destroyed the main airstrip. The French command staff was shocked. Colonel de Castre became withdrawn, uncommunicative. On the second night, the artillery commander committed suicide, saying, I am completely dishonored. Four days into the battle, the Viet Minh controlled the entire perimeter. The cost was high, thousands dead and wounded among the Viet Minh. Jop decided to change strategy. Cette décision... This decision on the Dien Bien Phu front constitutes for me one of the biggest and the most difficult decisions in my fighting life. As commander, General Von Nguyen Jap decided to end this attack based on the human wave tactic. 
biển người đó và tiến hành một cái cuộc The entire plan was changed. The attack was stopped, and all the heavy artillery pieces were pulled back to a distance. Then trenches and tunnels were dug, and the morale of the troops was rebuilt based on the slogan, Advance solidly, fight solidly. Shovels became extremely important weapons. All the cadres and soldiers put most of their time and energy into digging trenches and tunnels. We slowly surrounded Dian Bian Phu with trenches, cutting into the airstrip so it could not be used again, slowly tightening the noose around the necks of the French. With the airstrip out, the French garrison was dependent on parachute drops, but Viet Minh anti-aircraft fire forced pilots to fly too high. Supplies began falling into enemy hands. General Jacques' change in strategy was working, and he settled in for a long siege. For the French, Tien Bien Phu became a nightmare. The rainy season started early with drenching downpours. French dugouts and shelters collapsed. Clean water became impossible to find. Medical supplies ran out. No planes could land to evacuate the wounded. Men who were wounded in the trenches sunk under the yard-high mud to die. I arrived during the night of May 2nd, and Dien Bien Phu fell on May 7th. The memory I keep of it is one block of time. There was no day or night. I never lay down, I never slept. I don't remember eating. At four in the morning, there was a lull. We were 35 left at my post with one machine gun, one grenade left. So I asked on the radio, I said, since you cannot send reinforcements, he said, where do you want me to get them? You know there is nothing left. Then give me authorization to get out. He answered very simply, saying, no way. You're paratroopers. You're there to die. We built a barricade with corpses at the entrance, since we had no sandbags, and we waited. And we saw the shadows coming one by one, the Viet Minh. I decided to throw my grenade, and we immediately got return fire. One of my last impressions was to feel the wall of corpses shivering under the burst of fire. Then a grenade must have hit my helmet, because the net was burned, and the helmet dented. American helmets are very solid. I lost consciousness, and when I came to, there was above me, very close, a surgeon's mask from which a voice came, you are a prisoner of the army of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Though Viet Minh combat cameramen were present at Dien Bien Phu, scenes of the 55-day battle were restaged by a Soviet director after the French defeat. Some of the film sequences are authentic, some reenacted. Dien Bien Phu cost the French 1,500 dead, 4,000 wounded, 10,000 taken prisoner. Many of the prisoners died in Viet Minh camps. The Viet Minh victory at Dien Bien Phu cost them even more, 8,000 dead, 15,000 wounded. 